All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about bond valuation. And so with this lesson, we are introducing a new concept of bonds. And so an obvious question would be, well, what is a bond, right? What is this thing that we are going to be valuating? And so the way I like to think about bonds is that they are very similar to loans in that they are a way to borrow money for a certain period of time. But more specifically, a bond is a debt that usually requires some periodic interest payments that we call coupons for a stated term or a period of time. And then it also requires the return of the principal or the original amount borrowed at the end of the term. Okay, so now that we have introduced the concept of a bond, how are we going to evaluate them, right? How would we calculate the price of a bond? And so in order to answer that question, we need to know the components of a bond that are going to be used to calculate its price. And so we'll start with F. F is going to represent what we call the face value of a bond. And essentially the face value is just the amount that the bond is issued for. So if we were to think of it like a loan, if you took out a loan of $1,000, that would be the face value of the loan, or in this case, the bond. The face value is the amount that is being borrowed. And so F is the face value. And so then similar to the face value, C is known as the redemption value and is the amount that needs to be paid at the end of a term, right? So when you are paying back a bond, at the end of the bond's term, you have to pay back the amount that you originally borrowed. And so that's called the redemption value. And typically the face value will be equal to the redemption value, right? Typically you are expected to pay back the same amount that you borrowed. Okay, so typically F is going to be equal to C unless it is stated otherwise by a particular problem. Okay, and so next we have lowercase r, and lowercase r is going to represent the coupon rate. And so that determines the value of each coupon paid for the bond, right? So if we go back to our definition from the beginning of the video, we said that a bond is a debt that requires periodic interest payments called coupons. Right, and so small r is going to be the rate that determines the value of those coupons. And so small r is the coupon rate. All right, and so then capital F times small r is the face value times the coupon rate, and this is going to represent the amount of each coupon. Right, so the amount of the coupon is based on the coupon rate, which is a certain percentage of the face value or the amount borrowed. And so F times R is the coupon amount. All right, so next we have small n, and in this case, with regard to a bond, small n is going to represent the number of coupon periods, right? So n is the number of times that a coupon is paid throughout the term of a bond. So n is the number of coupon periods. Okay, and so then it's important to note here that for bonds, coupons are assumed to be paid semi-annually, right? So for every bond that you will come across, unless it is stated otherwise, the coupons are going to be paid semi-annually. So that means that the coupon rate will typically be given to you as a nominal rate convertible semi-annually. And we'll look at that when we get to our example problem, but just know that coupons are paid semi-annually and that is very important for the calculation of the price of a bond. Okay, and so the next step we have capital P, and capital P represents the price of the bond. That is how much you would have to pay in order to borrow a certain amount for a particular period of time. And so the price P is equal to the present value of the series of coupons that is paid throughout the term of the bond, plus the redemption value that is paid at the end of the term. And that present value is based on a rate of return that we call the yield rate, which is lowercase j. And so j is the yield rate, which you can think of just being the interest rate for a bond, right? So we have a coupon rate, which determines how much our coupons are, which is different than the yield rate, which kind of acts as the interest rate for the calculation of the price of the bond. And so in the real world, when you're working with bonds, this yield rate is typically determined by the condition of the current financial market, right? So the quality of this yield rate, whether it's good or bad, depends on how well the current financial market is. All right, so now that we have looked at all the components of a bond, and maybe that was a lot to take in, it seems very confusing at this point, don't worry, hang on, we are going to look at how to calculate the price of a bond using all these different components up next. 
All right, and so if we want to calculate the price of a bond, I want you to look at this timeline here. We're starting at time equals zero, and then I have time equals one, time equals two, time equals three, all the way up to some time equals n, right? And so these time periods are going to represent various coupon periods, where every period starting with time equals one, we are paying a coupon. Okay, and so remember that a coupon is equal to the face value of the bond F times the coupon rate R. Okay, so that is the amount of each coupon that is paid throughout the term of a bond. And so each one of these coupon periods, there will be a payment of F times R, right? Each one of these periods will have this same payment. And so then additionally, if you remember, Back to our definition of a bond, a bond not only requires periodic payments that we call coupons, but it also requires the return of the amount borrowed or the redemption value. And that is paid at the end of the term, right? So if the bond ends at time equals N, then at this period, we also need to pay back the redemption value. And remember, we represented that with C. And so we can add that to the payment that would be made at time equals N we can add that redemption value C. Okay, and so that is all of the payments that are going to be made for a bond throughout its term. And so remember what I said about the price of a bond, that the price is equal to the present value of the series of coupons paid plus the redemption amount paid at the end of the term. Okay, and so that means that the price of a bond would be calculated right here at time equals zero, right? This would be the valuation date for the present value for these coupon payments as well as this redemption value. And so if we wanted to write an equation to represent the price of the bond or the present value of this series of payments, we could write it like this. We would have that the price is equal to this series of coupon payments paid up until time equals n. And so this would just be an annuity, right? If we ignore this plus c, the redemption value at time equals n, we just have a series of payments of F times R, our coupons for an N number of years. And so we can represent that using the formula for the present value of an annuity immediate. And so we would have F times R times A N bracket J, where J is that yield rate, right? Remember the yield rate kind of acts as the interest rate for the bond. And so this would represent the present value of these coupon payments being made up until time equals n. And so, so far for our price calculation, we have calculated the present value of our coupon payments, but we still need to account for that redemption value paid at time equals n. And so how are we going to do that? How will we account for that plus c? Well, since this is a one-time payment at time equals n, we can just add that payment and then multiply it by a present value factor for those n number of periods, and that would bring it back to time equals zero where the price would be calculated, right? So we can add that redemption value C times the present value factor to the power of n, okay? And so then I'm just going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a subscript to our present value factor here of J just to remind us that this present value factor is going to be using that yield rate and not the coupon rate. Right, the coupon rate is only used for calculating the coupon right here in this formula. And so what we have here is the price formula for a bond. All right, and so now that you have seen where this formula comes from, now let's look at an example where we would use this formula. Okay, so here's our example. We have that a 10-year bond issued for $100 pays 5% coupons semi-annually and yields a nominal interest rate of 6% convertible semi-annually calculate the price of the bond. All right, so let's start by writing down that formula that we just found. We know that the price of a bond is equal to the face value times the coupon rate times the notation for the present value of an annuity immediate. So we have A and bracket J, where J is the yield rate, and then we will add that to the redemption value C times the present value factor to the power of N using that yield rate of J. Okay, and so now let's try to identify as many of these values as we can from our problem here. And so first, we are told that we have a 10-year bond, okay? And so you might be tempted to just say, oh, okay, n is equal to 10. However, that's not quite right. It is true that this bond is a 10-year bond, but remember, bonds require that the coupons be paid semi-annually. 
right? Notice that it says that the bond pays 5% coupons semi-annually, and the interest rate is a nominal interest rate convertible semi-annually. And so, and the number of coupon periods is not going to be 10 because there are two semi-annual periods in one year. So we need to multiply 10 by two, and that will tell us how many coupon periods there are because there's going to be two every year. And so that will be equal to 20. And so now we know that there are 20 coupon periods for this bond. So N is equal to 20. All right, so then we know that the bond is issued for $100. And so that is the face value of the bond. Capital F is equal to $100. All right, and so that also tells us that C, the redemption value, is equal to $100 because the face value and the redemption value are equal to each other unless it's stated otherwise. And it doesn't say anything about the redemption value in this problem. And so we are allowed to assume that they are the same. Okay, and so then we're told that the bond pays 5% coupon semi-annually. And so what that tells us is that the coupon rate R is an annual nominal rate that is convertible semi-annually of 5%. And so if you're not familiar with nominal interest rates, I would recommend that you go back and watch our lesson on that topic. I'll have it linked here for you to click on. But when you are given a percentage for the coupon rate, that is always given to you as a nominal interest rate convertible semi-annually. And so what that means is that we're going to have to change it a little bit in order to use it. You never use the raw value of a nominal interest rate. And so before we write down what R is equal to, because it's not 5%, let's just write that 5% as if it was a nominal interest rate convertible semi-annually, right? We represented nominal annual interest rates as I, and then we had a superscript with the parentheses around the number of times that it was convertible in a year, which semi-annual means two times per year, and so that would be the superscript there. This would be equal to that 5%, right? This is a nominal rate that is convertible semi-annually. And so if we wanted to have a rate that we can use, we should divide this rate by two, right? Because in order to convert from a nominal rate into an effective rate that is semi-annual, we have to divide this nominal rate by the amount of times it is convertible in a year, which is two. Okay, and so if this isn't quite making sense, all you have to know is that when you are given a coupon rate, you're going to have to divide it by two because it is a nominal semi-annual rate. And in order to get an effective rate that you are able to use in the price calculation, you have to divide by two. And so, R, our coupon rate will be equal to 0 0.05 divided by two, which will be equal to 0 0.025. That is the coupon rate. Okay, so that's very important to keep in mind because we're going to have to do the same thing for our yield rate as well, because you're going to assume, even if the problem doesn't tell you, that the yield rate is a nominal interest rate that is convertible semi-annually. And so let's calculate that next. We have that our yield rate is going to be 6%, right? This bond yields a nominal interest rate of 6% convertible semi-annually. And so in order to calculate what that would be as an effective semi-annual interest rate, we will have that J is equal to 0.06, that 6% divided by two, and that will be equal to 0.03. Okay, so I wanna make this very clear. Even if you don't quite understand why, just know that you need to divide your rates by two in order to calculate the price of a bond. The coupons are paid semi-annually, which means that all of your rates, the coupon rate and the yield rate, need to be semi-annual rates. And so they're going to be given to you in your problem as nominal rates that you need to convert into effective rates of interest. Okay, do not use the raw values of those nominal rates. And so with that, we now have everything that we need to calculate the price of this bond. And so let's plug in everything we know. We will have that the price is equal to the face value of 100 times the rate R, which is 0 0.025 times the present value of an annuity immediate. So we will have A and then N is equal to 20 bracket J, which is 0 0.03 plus the redemption value, which is 100 times the present value factor to the power of 20 using that yield rate of 0 0.03. All right, and so then if we were to write out this notation to be what it's equal to, as well as this present value factor, we would have that the price is equal to 100 times 0 0.025, that's gonna be 2.5 times one minus 
the present value factor to the power of 20 divided by 0 0.03, right, that is what this notation is equal to, plus 100 times 1 divided by 1.03 to the power of 20. All right, and so then if I rewrote this present value factor for this calculation to be what that is equal to, remember that the present value factor is 1 divided by 1 plus the interest rate to the power of whatever n is, right? That's how we got from this present value factor to this expression right here. And so we will have 1 divided by 1.03 to the power of 20. All right, and so then if you were to plug all of this into your calculator, you would find that the price is equal to $92.56. And that is the price of the bond in this problem. So now I want you to notice something about this price though. Remember that this bond was issued for $100, which means that whoever is purchasing the bond is hoping to borrow $100, but the price was only $92.56. So how does that really make sense? Well, it's all dependent on the coupon rate and the yield rate. And so if we clean up our work a little bit here, I want you to look at what would happen if we were to change our yield rate, right? What if instead of the yield rate being larger than our coupon rate, what if it was smaller, right? Hopefully you can agree that 0 0.03 is greater than 0 0.025 or that 6% is greater than 5%. Okay, and so what if instead of the yield rate being 6% convertible semi-annually, what if it was 4% convertible semi-annually, right? So what if we change this to be 0 0.04 and that would mean that our yield rate would be 0 0.02. Now it is less than our coupon rate. And so if we were to use this yield rate in this price calculation, this 1.03 would become 1.02, this 1.03 would become 1.02, and this 0.03 would become 0.02 as well. And so if I quickly make those changes, what I want you to see is that if we were to then calculate that using that yield rate, that the price is going to change in a significant way. And so if you were to calculate this in your calculator, you would not get $92.56. Instead, you would get $108.18. And so now, instead of the price being less than that $100 that is being borrowed, it is greater than that $100, right? So now because the yield rate was less than the coupon rate, whoever wanted to borrow that $100 is now having to buy the bond for more than $100. All right, and so then maybe you're wondering, well, what would happen if the yield rate is the same as the coupon rate? And so let's consider that. What if instead of 0 0.04, we had 0 0.05 or a 5% yield rate, which means that J would be equal to 0 0.025, right? So we would have 1.025 here, 1.025 here, and 0 0.025 in the denominator here, right? What would happen to this price calculation if we went through and used this yield rate. Well, if you plug this into your calculator, you would find that the price would be equal to exactly $100. Okay, and so now the price is the exact same as the face value of $100. And so now hopefully you can see how the coupon rate and the yield rate are kind of related in how they determine the price of a bond. And so to summarize that, if the yield rate is equal to R, then the price is going to be equal to the face value, and this is called buying the bond at par value, or just buying it at par. And so when you work with more example problems, you're going to see that the face value of bonds is referred to as the par value, and so this is where that comes from. Okay, but if the yield rate is greater than the coupon rate, then the price will be less than the face value, and that is known as buying at a discount, right? That is when the price of the bond is less than the amount that you want to borrow. But if the yield rate is less than the coupon rate, then the price will be greater than the face value, which means that you would be buying at a premium or buying it at a greater amount than the amount that you want to borrow. All right, and so that's a pretty good introduction to the valuation of bonds. If you want to see some more example problems, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.